when did, right, you, when, when, when did your first adult movie come out? What year? Seventies. Nineteen seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. Called Tigresses and Other Man Eaters. Now, <laughs> at that time, where would people see an X-rated movie? Probably in a theater. Theaters. Yeah, I had to go to theaters. Yeah. That's why when the market went on video, it was such a boom because people wanted to see adult films. They just didn't want to go to those theaters and see but, adult. But films. think about this: then if there's a scene going in there, yeah, maybe it's maybe it's a little disgusting. Did you it. when when it started going to videos? I remember the movie. Uh, you know, with Mark Wahlberg, he had the giant schmackle. Yeah, Boogie Nights. Uh, Boogie Nights. My name's on the credits on that film. It's called Boogie Nights. I was the consultant. Yeah. Who else would you get, I suppose? Yeah. But in that movie, they were kind of freaking out because everything was going to this video and they were worried. Right. Was there a feeling in the adult film business, oh, this is going to run it for us? That's we're exactly not gonna... what happened. Yeah. Yes. Little uh, did they know it was going to be the biggest Reynolds, thing for them ever. Because, right, because they, they wanted to, a lot of these guys were actually decent filmmakers. Gerard Damiano, I mean, Radley Metzger, Chuck Vincent. They may, if you look at some of these adult films of the 70s, they were decent movies. They were as good as most B films. And the thing is, they, uh, uh, they went switched to video. A lot of these guys felt like real filmmakers. They didn't like that because it switched over to rather than storylines and scripts. You and just makeup get and to the, was, the hi, scene, was, right? hi, where are you from? What's your hobbies like? Oh, how'd you get the originated? Really? Well, come over here and say hi to Mr. Happy. And that's your entire storyline. Yeah. So and a lot of these good filmmakers didn't like that. A lot of them just left. They got out of the business and said, I didn't get into porn to make garbage like that. You know, I didn't I wanted, get into you know, porn to make porn. Right. <laughs> but the funny thing is, you know, their attitude was they were making storylines and scripts. And look at the earliest films, Amanda by Night, Ecstasy Girls, Fascination, Buying the Roommates, door. Roommates, and Cafe Flesh. Yeah. were such good films they played in theaters in regular theaters they took the sex out and played them as regular films and you also they, you, know, you asked if how these women know him think about this in the 70s these women who were in their you know 70s and 80s now were in 30s and 40s back then so of course they they knew who he was it was sexual revolution deep and, throat it became kind of chic to, my to parents watched watched deep throat your parents watched deep throat <laughs> and they, they brought it to it? a party at their house and said uh we're showing something in this room kids you can't go in there the adults are gonna <laughs> and the, the adults would walk in and check it out for a few minutes and walk out what you know really, just, what really made a difference was, that was the 70s uh, uh shirley mcclain jack nicholson and warren Beatty are amongst three performers who did a amicus briefs with the court and then tried to defend Harry Reams and Linda Lovelace. So you don't ever penalize a performer for what they're doing on screen. You're playing with freedom of speech. And these three performers lent their support to Harry Reams, Gerard Damiano, and the, in the, the Deep Throat movie. And they go into that. And that gave us some legitimacy. They, yes. And then they, they, the Ron Howard film goes into some of that. How they did that? They had the support of those people. The because, the, the Larry Flint movie? I uh, know. The, uh, uh, the one about uh, uh, Deep Throat. The, the Ron, Ron Howard did a movie about Deep Throat. About the making of, yeah. Ron Howard and his partner, Brian Grazier. Really? Did a film all about... Produced it, not directed That it. must have been a right. version of uh, Cocoon no, that about, I didn't see. It's about see. what took place. <laughs> yeah. It was called... Sc I forgot the name of the film, but it was all about the whole scandal and the, the court case and all that, you know. Well, now everything's gone to computers, obviously. I mean, people... I guess they still put out DVDs, but do people really go and do that? Or not is it much. all... Now it's all Netflix. It, it's all... It's all the internet's oh, can you watch adult, dirty movies on Netflix? The adult industry is going out of business. Sure. And also, you know, a really? lot of uh, Showtime movies are actually porn that just cut differently. Right, Ron? Like you guys will like a lot do of something. Time, yeah, like Pirates. They yeah. cut out the sex and played it as a regular movie. Right. Mm -hmm. But right now, the business is under serious. It's going out of business. The major companies, some have already folded and gone out of business. Here's the problem. How do you compete with free? Here's the, the problem I see. You can't compete. There are so, there, you could go on the internet and watch clips of porn and never watch the same clip twice that's correct. right how go, do you compete year, how do you compete with that if you're giving your product away for free basically everywhere that's my point how do you keep doing people it people spend five grand ten grand a year on porn now they spend nothing and the quality is just as good what protected us in many ways was the bad duping quality of a vhs to, or one inch to vhs or you know it didn't make a good copy it'd be blurry after three generations yeah. right yeah, yeah well now that they have this digital you know number 560 is just as good as number one two so now they they dupe and the pirates have access to good quality product and there's out and out stealing. Now, if somebody there's goes all to these companies like you porn, porn tube, sex for free .com, sure, porn hamster, porn hub. These companies are taking food. Another out of the thing that I never, another thing that I never get is they sell memberships. You're going to sign up or what? But why should you? I right. mean, look at it from the right. from the consumer's it's point of exactly view. Why should right. I pay free. if it's all free on it's there anyway? It's all free. You know, these girls are making so much money just doing cam shows now. 
You know, they, they can't right? Pirate that. See, that's why. Right, they can't pirate. So you pirate pay free. money for them to talk directly to you, but you're paying whatever it is. Some girls make ten grand a week. Wait, but couldn't the couldn't the user on the other end record that somehow? If yeah. sure, yeah, but they it's, cheat and they fake it too. Sometimes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But it's also kind of worthless. Who wants to watch that? You want them talking directly to you and oh, saying your name, oh. and you know, what I mean, you might the as well just watch have their, at that their point. loyal fans. Yeah. I thought on that cam show, what I thought that was was somebody at a cam, and it had a bunch of people watching at the same time, last the same year time. Or something. Some I, some have that, sometimes right? Sometimes it's true. It's yeah, fake. sometimes yes, but a lot of times it's the one on one. Buy my cam show for the next fifteen minutes, and I'll talk directly to you. Well, these women and Ron, of course, you know, Ron's like the the only guy, but. That could draw a crowd, I think. But these women come in and they appear at the Red Parrot or wherever they're going to sure. be, and people come out and see them. And it's you know it's a big deal. And and I think they do pretty well on those live shows. Too. Absolutely, absolutely, they do. Yeah, I mean, I represent some people, and they make great money on the road. Like that's you make your money on the road and in cam stuff. Now it's not these girls aren't making their big time. Money. Same thing as rock and roll. They used to be there that the uh, the rock and roll show would promote the album. Now the album promotes the show. Because right. they make their money now on the live shows. Correct. It's not like it was in the old days. Because so know? many people are listening to the music and they pay a monthly fee. And listen, right. You know, it's, yeah. I, I'm just learning how that works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what's crazy? The internet. Advertising through bandwidth. But in some cases, they out and out steal right out of a female's uh, a, a web club. Their, their club, their, their own little pages. Yeah. And a lot of these pirates steal right from them. And it's really sad. But what are you going to do? Who are you going to go to? Because there aren't too many cyber cafes. You can't go anywhere there. They move around. They go to different cyber cafes. But they can't be caught. I'm saying if you were to complain to your congressman, how many congressmen are going to stick up we for the adult exact, group? Right, right, right. right. Face that exact problem. Yeah. Or how about just past that? You can't control where this is coming from. So if it's the Chinese yeah. running you porn, what, are you gonna how, do? what can you do? Nothing. You can do nothing. I never thought of that. You porn might be run by the Chinese. It could be. Girl, we know. don't know. We don't Sam know. Sam said it well when he said, you know, no one really defends porn because it's porn. But let one guy watch porn while pulling a dolphin up his keister. Oh, <laughs> people are going to be upset. Greenpeace, save the whales, it'd be a big deal. But no one really cares about defending.